morning guys I want to share with you today an idea I got from Stephen Covey in his book the seven habits of highly effective people and it is the idea of living a principle centered life to me this has helped me out so much and I hope it helps you this is something that I believe will allow us to deal with the complexities of change that happen outside of us see if we have even in that one word and you see me talking about my one word determination every one word which is revolving around a truth principle will eventually connect and converge with other truth principles. These things last. They've lasted forever. And if we can find our one word, that one thing that is in our life that we know we're drawn to and we can follow, if we're centered around one, even one correct principle, nothing outside of us, not people, not circumstances, not anything can take away our freedom, peace, and happiness. Have a great day, everybody.
launched a free training series to help you learn every day from billionaires. It's 30 days. It's called the Billionaire Mindset and the link to join is in the description below. So to celebrate, please enjoy this video from Elon Musk from our vault. Really the way to um, sell any product is through word of mouth. Making a product that people love starts with you making something that you love. I, mean, I think marketing is the most important thing. And this is not just business entrepreneurial. This is every area of your life. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee and sip on today's message from Elon Musk. Also, if you want to learn how to build your confidence, check out my 254 Confidence series. It's free. The link is in the description below. There are just times when something is important enough you believe in it enough that you you do it in spite of the fear how aside from making great products how do you get people excited about tesla there's a lot of people i know and that i talk to who are just intrigued and interested and excited about tesla as a company the thing i really focus on at tesla is like we really put all the money into and attention into trying to make the product as compelling as possible so um because i think that the, really the way to um sell any product just through word of mouth. So if, if one, somebody gets the car, they really like it, they, and, and actually the key is like to have a product that people will love. Yeah. Um, and, and generally people, that, um, you know, if they're at a party or touring friends or whatever, um, you'll talk about the things that you love. But you, you know, if you just like something, it's okay. You're not going to care that much. But if you, you get love the reactions from the highs and the lows, yeah, so you got to make sure people it, really love you're gonna, it. It's, yeah. You're going to talk, you know, and, and, and then that'll generate word, generate word of mouth. And that's basically how, how our sales have, have grown. Like, we don't, we don't spend any money on advertising or endorsements. Or, uh, and um, so anyone, like, buys our car, they just bought it because they, they like the car. And, you know, it's, like, it's genuine. Making a product that people love starts with you making something that you love. Really, think about it. Would you buy from you? Would you subscribe to you? Would you comment and tell your friends about you? In our rush to get rich, to make money, we push products out that we don't love. And if you don't love them, people around you won't love them either. So look at my YouTube channel as an example. I love my YouTube channel. I make my YouTube channel for myself. I learn. It's selfish. It's for me. The top 10 rules videos, the espresso videos, the content that I bring together, I need it. It's my education. I love my channel. I would share my channel with other people. If I saw my channel and I wasn't creating, it'd be the first thing that I subscribe to. It would be much watch YouTube for me. I need it. And if you guys didn't like it, I would still create it for myself. It wouldn't have as much editing and fancy effects and all that stuff, but I would still do it because I need it for me. I make it for myself selfishly and then I share it with you guys and thankfully you guys like it enough that I can turn a business from it and continue to hire a team and create more content and pump more stuff out but as much as I think that my channel still needs to get better and grow and improve and I still suck and I need to continuously get better at the, at the work that I do I think my channel deserves a Nobel Peace Prize like I think my channel is amazing and you have to love what you do you have to feel like the thing that you're doing Yes, can always get better, but it's really solving a problem. Your product, your service, what you create, your expertise solves a problem. You know that it's genuinely helping people. If you don't have that belief, you're never going to win. This is why so many people who are starting businesses, when you go and you look at hot business trends for 2019 or 2020 or how to win in network marketing and like what products I should sell. If that's how you're starting, you're going to lose. If you're just chasing trends, you will lose. There's nothing wrong with network marketing per se. Just most of the people getting into it are just trying to make a buck. Just like how most people get into entrepreneurship. You're just trying to make money. Too many people they end up going broke because the people who love doing that thing will crush you every day of the week. Think about who you're going up against. You're going up against people in whatever industry you're in. You're going up against people who have experience, who have expertise, who have knowledge and love the thing that they're doing. And you're going to go in because it's a hot trend for this year and expect to win. No. Now, if you love it and you absorb it and it's, it's for you and it's must have, 
you will pour so much energy, so much love, so much creativity and find a path that nobody else has seen before. That's how you ultimately win. That's how you can then start talking about it, start promoting it, start building exposure, getting word of mouth. If you want people to talk about you, you have to create something that is worth talking about. And there's no way that you create it unless you absolutely love the thing that you're doing. So you have to create a product or service that you would use yourself. You have to create a channel that you would subscribe to yourself. You have to feel confident that if your mom was suffering with a problem that your business could solve, that you would recommend it 100% to your mom. If my mom was struggling with entrepreneurship, you need to subscribe to my channel. It will help you. It will save you. If you can't be like that yet, go back, make it better until you find something that you absolutely love and pour your energy into. So I'm going to give you a three step process that you can follow to help you evaluate where you're at and how you can get better. Step number one, get out of your space, wherever you are right now, wherever you're working, you're in front of your computer, you're at your office, you're at your home, your basement, whatever, wherever you normally work, wherever you are right now, get out of your space. Just get out of your typical space, go outside for a walk, go down to the lobby, cross the street, whatever, get outside your typical space. Okay. Step number two, now that you're in a different space, think about your customers, think about who you are helping. Think about the problem that you solve. So if it's me, I can go for a walk outside. I'm thinking about entrepreneurs. I'm getting out of my space. It's too easy to get locked into what, what I'm doing, right? I got to make, I got to make 20 videos today. I got to respond to comments. I got to connect with my team. I got to all the stuff adds up and we forget about our customers. So I go outside and think about entrepreneurs. And I try to picture the people that I've helped, the people who've come to my workshops, the people who ask me questions, the people who join me on lives, right? Close your eyes, you're in a new space now, and you think about your customers, think about the people who you help, the people that you are designing your products and services for. Think about them, picture them, try to picture somebody, right? Picture an individual that you know that you are trying to help. Picture that person in your mind. And if you don't have a customer yet, think about the ideal customers that you're trying to target and try to come up with a face, somebody that you can look at. And in step number three, go back to where you were, go back to your office, your computer, wherever you were with that person in mind and then evaluate your products. With that person in mind, look at your YouTube videos, look at your products, look at your services, look at your Instagram feed, whatever you're trying to get out there, look at your books, look at your books, whatever you're trying to promote, look at them with that person in mind now. You've stepped outside your day to day. You're above, you're not in the, in the muck of doing all the work. I know you've got tons of stuff to do. You're an entrepreneur. I feel you. You've stepped outside, you've imagined that person, you're coming back and looking at your products or services with fresh eyes, with them in mind. Do they actually need it? Will this change their life? Will this solve their problems? And if not, go make it better. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that question of the day, I wanna know what is one major improvement that you need to make to your products or services that will make your customers love it so much that they want to talk about it to their friends. Let me know what that change is. Put in the comments below. As I was prior to that, I was a dead broke carpet cleaner, living off credit cards, working hard, struggling, doing a good job, operating with integrity, really cared, uh, but there's no relationship between being good and getting paid. Right. And so until you actually learn how to sell what it is that you're off, whatever it is, service business, internet business, you know, being an author, speaker, doctor, it doesn't matter. You're in the, the marketing business and, and in the marketing business, you're in really the relationship business. Yeah. You know, how you can either be a transaction, you know, marketer, or you can be a relationship marketer. And there's always, as you know, there's always more money uh, in, in relationship. And I grew up incredibly shy, incredibly introverted. So I'm kind of like a introvert that learned how to talk to people because if you don't, nothing happens. Right, right. I mean, I think marketing is the most important thing. Just like hold your breath for three minutes and see how well you do. Hold it for five minutes, hold it for 10 minutes. You, you can't, you'll die. Uh, marketing is like that for business. If, if, if people's businesses are struggling, if their missions, and this is not just business entrepreneur, this is every area of your life. I mean, per, you know, if you if you have a partner, you did some sort of marketing. There's something you did to meet the person, position yourself. So to answer the question, uh, selling is what you do when you're on the phone or face to face with somebody. Uh, marketing is what you do to get someone on the phone or face to face with you, so that they're properly positioned. So the, the key, the, the word positioning is really critical. So by the time that they actually talk with you 
or visit your store or go to your website or see you speak, they're pre-interested, pre-motivated, pre-qualified, and predisposed to do business with you. And I've said that a million times, uh, and I drilled that into my head. It's all about you know pre-interested, pre-motivated, pre-qualified, predisposed. And if, peop if people are set up that way, the whole job of selling that selling is much easier. Frankly, if you have to rely on talking someone into something then you just aren't doing any marketing. If you wanna get the billionaire mindset, you can join my free training where every day for the next 30 days, I will send you an amazing video so you can start hanging out with billionaires. The link to sign up is right there next to me. Go click it, it's amazing. <laughs> I'll see you there. Hello everybody, Anton Crowley here from dropshiplifestyle.com. And before you click the skip ad button and move
that same power, that same determination to see in our minds the image, the visions that we want to create today in our lives. Let's see ourselves doing the best we can on all of the stretches and exercises we do together here. that power we have, our true being, our presence, our determination to see in our mind right now, go into the future. Good morning, Determination. How's everyone doing today? Another beautiful day here, outdoors. Uh, if you're indoors, wherever you are, let's go, everybody. Here we go. Another wonderful moment together. Another great day in the gym of life. Gym of life never ends. So here we go. We're going to start, when I say go, we're going to start jogging on the spot, doing the best jog we can, best jog we've ever done, or we can simply walk on the spot. So depending on how much space you have. We should be able to do this within the space that we have. So here we go. Ready, everybody? When I say go, your best jog ever. Ready? And go. Still focused on our breathing. In through your nose. Feeling the joy of you commanding your body. Remember, you're the boss of your mind. Your mind is the boss of your body. Almost there. Let's go, everybody. Keep going. Feel the power of our heart starting to beat a little bit faster. Our breathing becoming a little bit more difficult. But feel our power still controlling our breathing. And stop. All right, back to our best walk, either side to side or simply walking on the spot. But focused on our breathing. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Oh, wow. What a day. What another pristine, perfect day. Enjoy every moment, wherever you are. Enjoy this. Enjoy your power, your gift to always work on your mind and your body. Always in the gym of life. Okay, everybody, let's start with our 10 shoulder rolls forward. Here we go. Ready? And go. Stop. Let's do arm circles forward. Big arm circles. Ten forward. All right. Now let's go backwards. Again, just feel the joy of you controlling your body to move through space, all through the power and control of your own determination. Bend your knees 
hand side stretch, five on each side. for the sky wherever you are. Here we go. Holding it for 10 seconds. And now reach for your toes, straight knees. Again, feel the joy and the striving. Reaching for your toes, even if you can't touch them yet. Always yet. back up. Okay, let's uh, work on our balance. Grab one leg and find your balance. Bend the other knee if you have to. Hold it for 10. Pull that leg back. Feel the power of you finding your balance in this moment. And switch to the leg. And bend that knee. Then you've got roots going under your feet, going through the ground. Hug our knee this time. Bend the other knee if you have to. Big hug. And find that balance again. Hold it for 10 seconds. Get your balance, you get it right back. Let's do five push-ups together. Here we go. That's five push-ups. If you gotta keep your knees down, go ahead. Whatever you do, do your best. Five sit-ups. What a moment. All right, and let's do five squats. Our best five squats. Here we go. Feet flat on the floor. Looking straight ahead, bending the knees all the way down, all the way up. All right, let's do lunges now. Three on each side, best lunges. Keep that back straight if we can, looking straight ahead. Excellent, all right, let's do 10 second plank. Belly's knees off the ground. Always thinking of whatever. Bringing ourselves back to our presence. reaching through the floor as far away from our body as we can. Holding it down. And reach for one side, hold it there. Again, feel the joy of reaching, striving, doing your best. Even if you aren't able to reach where you want to be yet. And switch to the other side. Power of you winning right now. Just roll it right now. All right, and let's put our feet together and gently push our knees down with our elbows. There we go. Hold it there for ten.
Okay, one leg forward, one leg back. Go as far back as you can. Keep that knee on the ground. Put that knee down. Make sure you're not hurting yourself. You should just feel it pull, not anything. Okay, and switch to the other side. Ceiling of the sky, wherever we are. Here we go. Cobra stretch. Hold it there for ten. Feel the power of your being right here, right now. Okay, and legs crossed again. Back straight. Eyes closed. Breathing in through our noses and out through our mouths. Here we go. Going into the future, into our imagination right now. Seeing what we want to do our best on today when that music goes on. For me, I'm going to be working on two exercises. One is lunges, as many lunges as I can do within the first song. And the second song, as many sit-ups as I can do to that song. What about you? See it in your mind right now. You can play two of your own songs. You can listen to the songs I have. But choose your own exercises if you don't like the ones I'm doing. It doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing. Whatever you want to do. Whatever movement you want to do safely and effectively. See it in your mind right now. Before you bring it out into the world. You've got determination. You were born to win. To bring out all your visions, all your positive visions of yourself, of people, of the world. The way we do our best on these exercises when that music goes on is an expression, a reflection of the way we do our best at everything. Jim. Keep going. 
keep going. We don't let anything stop us. That's where that sun goes. Every moment. You're doing lunges with me right now. I'm proud of you. You're a people. As it gets harder, we work. That's how powerful we are. We have that determination, that choice. Not winning. Proud of you. If you haven't given up, keep going. Alright, set up for me. Here we go. Always control your breathing. Bring it back to that. The fact that you can still control your room, even you know, when your body wants to breathe faster, that's more proof of your determination. You do that in you all the time, no matter what. And you can apply this, you can use this energy, whatever you're doing, wherever you are. The way you talk, the way you behave, the way you read, write, the way you're kind and loving, use determination. Use your power to be positive and never give up. Just like we're doing right now on these exercises, on these sit-ups. We're not giving up. No matter how hard it's getting. See, we know the truth. If we do what is easy, we give up. Our life will be hard. But if we do what is hard, we never give up. Our life will be easy. So we gotta remember that all the time. That's the power of our determination. Controlling our mind. Motivating the mind. So the body will fall. Keep going, determination. I'm so proud of you wherever you are. Because you are who you are. Strive to be better all the time. You are infinite intelligence. You, we, are double I. Infinite intelligence. Powerful beyond measure. We don't choose to lose, we determine and win. Still with me, keep going. I love you, so proud of you, keep going. Even if you stop. Get back up, at it again. Keep going. This is the way you're gonna live. Even if you stop. 
even if you get tired, even if you make mistakes, you're going to learn. You're going to get information. And you're going to eventually win. How powerful you are. That's why I love you and all of us. No matter what. Oh, long song. That's okay. That's good. Love it. Keep going. Our body will rest and recover. Almost there. Keep going. Oh, well done. So proud of you. I love your determination. Great work today. I'm so proud of you, wherever you are. Take the power of this time we had together, apply it to everything in your life. Doesn't matter whether we're in school, at work, wherever we are. The gym of life never ends. And life is the greatest teacher. That's why I love you and everything and all the infinite intelligence around us. It's life. It's always here. You're always learning, always growing. I love your determination. Have a great day, week, and life always. Until next time.
Welcome to the Billionaire Mindset, your 30-day journey to thinking like a billionaire. Now you can just watch this video or if you want to sign up for the entire series for free and get the bonus PDF companion calendar, check the link in the description below. Today is day 24 and we're going to learn how you can be a leader like a billionaire. Enjoy. I think just generally the, the, the path to leadership should not be uh, through, um, you know, basically MBA business school situation. It's, it's like it should be kind of work your way up, do useful things. And, um, you know, and, and there's, there's a bit too much of the somebody goes to a high profile MBA school and then kind of parachutes in as the, yeah. as the leader, but they don't actually know how things work. Um, they, they, you know, they could be good at, say, PowerPoint presentations or something like that, um, and they can present well, but they don't actually know how things work because they do not, um, you know, they don't, they, 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 they like parachute in instead of like working their way yeah. out. Yeah, know? they so didn't, just, they never went through a, an apprenticeship, for yeah, lack of a better word, yeah. Yeah, they're, so they're, they're, they're kind of like just not aware of what, what's really needed for, uh, you know, to make, to make great products. Um, so. I mean, I don't want to trash MBAs too much here, and I, I actually do have a dual undergrad, a Wharton undergrad, and physics um, at UPenn. So, um, you know, so I have like, you know, it's, it's, I have direct exposure to to uh, um, you know to business school, and I went you know to do undergrad business school with with physics, but um, and, and I was a t teaching assistant for two semesters, and I graded MBAs and uh, undergrads, um, so. Uh, but I, I think it's just a little bit too much. Like, like people look at MBA school as like I, I want to parachute into being the boss instead of earning it. And like I don't think that's that's good. My opinion is that um, I can do some things that Amazon uh, uh, that are would be hard for other people to do only because of my history with the company. And um, my as the company has grown, of course. My job has changed very much, and um, it has. Uh, my main job today is I'm kind of the. I I I work hard at helping to maintain the culture, um, you know, a culture of high standards, of operational excellence, of uh, you know, of inventiveness, of willingness to fail, uh, willingness to make bold experiments. I'm the I'm 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 you know I'm the guy I'm the counterbalance to the institutional no who can say yes. Um, but I won't, you know, I'm not going to be here forever. Amazon is a really, uh, the, the, many of the traits that make Amazon unusual are now deeply ingrained in the culture. In fact, if I wanted to change them, I couldn't. If I decided tomorrow that I wish Amazon did less pioneering and more close following, I couldn't do it. The culture is, um, is, you know, cultures are self-reinforcing, and that's a good thing. Um, you know, the, the, the people who come to the company, we get sometimes people come to the company and they can't, they're, we're, they find Amazon very boring because we don't have enough, you know, competitive zeal. You know, we don't wake up, our, some annual planning processes and, and some companies literally start with who are our three biggest enemies? And then, you know, here's how we're going to hold them at bay or defeat them. And our, we don't, have such a list at Amazon. It's not how our annual planning process works. And so, but if you're on the other hand, if you're the kind of person who gets up in the morning and says in the shower time, you know, how, what can we invent for customers and what can we do differently and how can we improve that experience and so on and so on, then, you know, then it's going to be a playground. Is there I still run into work, by the way. I, I took my family on vacation to uh, France, my wife's extended family, there are about 20 of us. And we had an unbelievably good time. Great food, everything. We were there for a week. I got back to Seattle and I ran into the office. I'm having so much fun. I'm actually a big fan of anecdotes in business, not building a narrative structure around them necessarily, but I still have uh, an email address that customers can write to. I see most of those emails and I don't answer very many of them anymore, but, but I see them and I, and I forward them, uh, some of them, the ones that catch my curiosity, I forward them to the executives in charge of that area with, with a question mark. And that question mark is just a shorthand for, can you look into this? Why is this happening? What does it, what's going on? And 
what I find is very interesting because we have tons of metrics. We have you know weekly business reviews with these metric decks, and we look at our we know so many things about customers and their uh, their you know whether we're delivering on time. Uh, what you know, uh, whether the uh, packages have too much air in them, and you know, wasteful of packaging, and so on. We have so many metrics that we monitor. And the thing I have noticed is that when the anecdotes and the data disagree, the anecdotes are usually right. There's something wrong with the way you're measuring it, and that's why it's so important to to keep your you need the, to run something that you, where you're doing, you know, uh, shipping billions of packages a year. For sure, you need good data and metrics. To, are you delivering on time? Are you delivering on time in every city? Are you delivering on time to apartment complexes? Are you delivering on time in certain countries? You do need the data. But then you need to check that data with your intuition and your instincts. And you need to teach that to the, all the senior executives uh, and, and junior executives, too. What are the qualities of your leadership that make you successful at such diverse pursuits? Mm. And what works for in one area that maybe doesn't work in another? <clears throat> well, I tell you, it, it works in all areas because I, my life is fueled by my being. Yep. And the being fuels the doing. So I come from a centered place. I mm -hmm. come from a focused place. I come from compassion. Um, it's, just, it's just my nature. I come from a willingness to understand and to be understood. Right. And I come from wanting to, to, to connect. I mean, the secret of that show for 25 years is that people could see themselves in me. All over the world, they could see themselves in me. And even as I became um, more and more uh, financially successful, which was a big surprise to me. I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. Um, you mean you got more than that 30,000? I got more than 30,000 by the time I was 30. So, <laughs> so my, so, but what, what I realized is through the whole process, because I'm grounded in my own self, that although I could have more shoes, my feet stayed on the ground, although I was wearing better shoes. These are kind of cute today, too. Uh, so I could keep my feet on the ground, even though I could get more shoes. And I could understand, I could understand that it really was because I was grounded. I've, I've done the, was doing and continue to this day to do the consciousness work. I work at staying awake. And being awakened is just another word for spirituality, but spirituality throws people off and they think you mean religion. When I was hiring people for my company, for own, uh, for looking for presidents, uh, when people would come in, I'd say, tell me, what is your spiritual practice? And literally would throw people, oh, no, well, the, I, well, I'm not religious. Or I said, I didn't ask you about your right. religion. I asked you what's your spiritual practice. What do you do to take care of yourself? What do you do to keep yourself Centered. What do you do to the? And uh, you know, one woman started crying. You know, that's not the person. <laughs> <laughs> that's a sign. That's a sign. So, so to answer your question, yeah. everything is fueled that comes from me really wanting to be a better person on Earth. Leadership is not only about inspiring. Leadership is those people who join your company. You have to create value for him. You have to making sure in three years he will be different. Not because his job is different, because if the people are not different, the products will never be different. I told many people when they joined Alibaba, I say, guys, I don't know fortunate or unfortunate to join Alibaba. We work much longer than the, the others, much harder. We had more problems than most of the companies. If you can survive in Alibaba, you can survive at any company in the world because life is tough. We never promise you will be rich, you will be successful, you will be promoted. But we will promise you, you will be a problem, you have a wrong, you will make a mistake, you have a terrible boss. We all promised. So you set the expectation, but have a good vision. So that is the way we manage the company. And I think 
when you hire good people, the good people believe the vision they will get. So when I visiting a company, whether it's a good CEO or not, I do not listen to the CEO. I listen to his people. If the people believe the vision, all the people believe this guy. If the people believe the vision, if the people believe this guy, this company has hope. A good, a good entrepreneur can always tell good stories. I don't need to listen story from you guys. I can tell your people, right? If your people, any young people in your company, he can tell me the vision. He can tell me what they're doing. That is a good company. That's leadership. Leadership making sure everybody, when they sleep, when they drink, when they talk, when they go to the toilet, they talk their vision and they believe it. I found out some great leaders in the world. They are always positive. They never complain others and never complain. And uh, they, they look at the things in a different view, like normal people. So I think people in my company, they, at the beginning, they don't like me because I'll always think about 10 years, five years. And then after we're working together for three or five years, they find, hmm, you are right. Then we got the credit rating. And as a CEO, one of the jobs where everybody's happy, you have to see the unhappy things. When everybody's unhappy, you have to see the happy things. So leadership is nature, but you have to have train and learn. And I got my leadership sub upgraded in Davos. I see so many. You know, Ali Enter Financing, how many people here know about Alipay? Thank you. Alipay's decision was made here. I was thinking about Alipay, you know, but I was not able there to launch Alipay because in China, if you do financing without license, you will be in jail at that time. So I said, I went to the banks, can you help us do the e-commerce on transaction? No, 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 no. No banks would accept it. So if there will be no Alipay, no financing, the e-commerce would go nowhere. So I was, year 2004, I was here. Hello everybody, Anton Crowley here from dropshiplifestyle.com. And before you click the skip ad button and move on. Listen to a uh, speech by two state leaders about leadership. And this guy said, leadership is about responsibility. You believe it, but don't be, the people don't believe it. If you think it's so critical, you should pay any price to do it. So that day changed my mind and I called back to my uh, team and said, let's launch it within one month. If somebody has to go to the jail, I go to the jail. Who would be the second one follow me? If I go, you continue, and you go to the jail, you go continue. That was the, called the leadership determination. And year 2004, I made the decision here, I called it back. And now today the Alipay launched, and it's so big, over you know, 800 million people today using Alipay globally. If you look around the world at the people that succeed and mm -hmm. the people that other people want to work with, the natural leaders, it isn't because they have the highest IQ or they can kick a football or anything like that. They're, right. they're people that you want to work with. I mean, I've got a wonderful friend named Tom Murphy. I know I would do anything for him. You know, he's never going to ask me to do it, but I mean, I want to, <laughs> but I want to do it. I mean, I, I want to do it. I mean, he's done so many things for me. And then, and you know, I, you know, he doesn't have to pay me to do it or anything of the sort. That, 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 that's what you want to, you want to look for that and then you want to be that. You never wanted to beat your competition? No, I want to be successful. You said teammates versus competition. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, but, but I mean, at Solomon Brothers all those times, I, you work with other people. One of the ways, incidentally, Stephanie, to really get ahead is to give credit to somebody else. When I say, oh, I didn't do it, Lloyd did that and he involved me, let me tell you, I'm telling everybody it's me as well but I've now made a friend and you respect me because I've shared the credit. And if you say no, me, 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 I, 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 um, nobody likes you and nobody respects you and they think you are exaggerating everything. 
but to the extent you give credit to elsewhere, the thought of are they exaggerating doesn't even come up. If I could get my employees one at a time to reach out and talk and engage a guest on a very personal level, not a dealer talking to a blackjack player, but Annie talking to Mr. Jones. How are you today, Mr. Jones? Nice to see you again. Is there anything I can do for you? You feel like playing blackjack this morning? How's your wife? All of a sudden, forget the crystal chandeliers and the hand woven carpets and the marble. It means nothing. All of a sudden, you're engaged with someone who cares about you. If I could arrange for my employees to find that gratifying and rewarding and increasing of their self-esteem, I would have plugged into the magic of business. And I finally, with the help of some other people, figured it out four or five, six years ago. And it changed my business and changed my life. It was a subject that I'm going to explain to you called storytelling. We took 900 supervisors at Wynn and put them in school. It took about three or four hours of training with some people from England. And we explained to them that we had a structure in the company that was very convenient. In every part of the hotel, which runs, as you know, 24 hours a day, we have a pre-shift meeting. If it's a restaurant, just before the restaurant opens, the maitre d' or the manager meets with the waiters and has a 10-minute session. The chef in the kitchen meets with his cooking line and has a session. Housekeepers on each floor meet with the inspectresses that are the supervisors on each floor of the hotel. Department by department, public area porters, there are collections of 12 to 15 people, or maybe as few as seven, with a line supervisor who gives them whatever it is they need to learn that day before they start their shift. We had a structure in place in the hotel that was very convenient. But instead of giving them inane or ordinary or mundane information, we changed the program to this. The supervisor said to the group of eight or 10 or 12 people, has anybody got a story of something that happened yesterday or in the past week special with a guest? And now I'm going to give you a true example. Bellman says to the bell captain, yeah, <laughs> yesterday I checked in a man and his wife, older couple from California, and the bags came in, and I asked them to check and see if all the bags were there. And the woman let out a hoot. Oh, my God, Herbie, I forgot the medicine bag. And that was a small hand case in which his medicine, he was a diabetic, and her medicine, they were in their 70s, were contained. Oh, my God, Herbie, your insulin is in the bag. I left it on the front hall table when we got in the car. Oh my God, what are we going to do? We'll have to go back. I'll call the airport. Bellman tells the bell captain, I told him, just a minute, ma'am, where do you live? Pacific Palisades. Is there anybody at home at your house? Well, our housekeeper's there. I have a brother that lives in Encino. It's a, it's a Latino Bellman. My brother, Hervé, lives in Encino. Why don't I give him a call? He can go over to your house and pick up the bag, and we'll manage to get it here for you. When do you need the medicine? It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. She says, by 7 a.m. He says, don't you worry. If you can get that lady on the phone, tell her that Herve Mendez is coming, and we'll get it here at 7 o'clock in the morning. You can do that? Yes, ma'am. She calls, he waits, she calls, tells the housekeeper, is the bag there? Yes, you left it on the front hall table. Herve is coming to get it. Let him have it within the next hour. Okay, bye. You sure you can do it? Please, lady, enjoy dinner. Have a good time. Everything's going to be fine, I promise. Kid goes downstairs, tells the bellman on duty, his supervisor, that he's got to go get the bag. 
jumps into his car, drives five hours to his brother's house, picks up the bag, turns around, and gets back to Las Vegas at four in the morning, takes the bag to the bellman and says, make sure this gets to room 10 or whatever it was. By 7 a.m., it's got the ladies' medicine. I'm not done with the story. The relevance of this story, there's a thousand of those a month. The supervisor's been trained. Everybody in the room says, wow, that's great, Mendez. We have an internet loop, a special internet thing in the hotel for the employees, and we have a sign shop, and we make signs for the back of the house. Immediately, a picture is taken of that Bellman Mendez. His story is encapsulated in large print. We make paper signs and we decorate the back of the house. We publish Mendez's picture and story on the internet and it's all over the employee's staff dining room and everybody is reading about this bellman who's now a local hero. And his chest is out to here and he's taken a bow and he feels great because of the recognition he's getting from his peer group. Now, everybody else in the room with that bellman is looking for a story so they can tell it the next day. We found, we found a key, we found a key to making a single employee acting with a single guest instantly gratifying and increasing of their self-esteem. Now every employee in the hotel is looking for a story. The, the dealers are on their way down the hall to take a break at the staff dining room and they see a lady and a man looking a little confused and they walk over on break and say, you look like you're looking for something. Can I help you? And Lady says, well, we're looking for a meeting room called Lafitte. Oh, that's our ballroom. You're, you're standing here by the B-bar. You have to go down past Wing Lei, the Chinese restaurant. Wait a minute. Come on with me. I'll take you. And the dealer makes a detour for five minutes and takes this couple and shows them the Lafitte room. You think that that hotel is ever going to be the same again to those two people or that lady and her husband with the insulin? Hell, screw the chandeliers and the handwoven fabrics and the onyx and the marble. It means nothing. They're going to tell their friends what an incredible place my hotel is. We've taken storytelling 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year, to a great discipline in our company, giving people recognition for doing the one thing that creates a franchise that's strong, stronger than anything I know about. That applies to your business. You've got to find those ideas that lift your staff, make them feel great about themselves in the context of your business. You do that, and I tell you that the results will astound you First an idea, and then a program. First an idea, and then a building. It works every time. The newspaper hired an outside consulting firm to find a